The Zerg is a vast locust swarm that... What? The Tyranids are a vast locust swarm that... What? The swarm is a vast locust swarm with an innate desire to consume everything in its path. It absorbs the best qualities of all of the creatures that it kills, making themselves better as they consume entire planets. They fly living ships, and they evolve their bodies to be the perfect weapons. They also had a very deadly war with the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium. And though they were pushed back, the swarm is still a threat to everyone in the universe. The swarm move through the galaxies. They move through the drift on their giant living vessels. These ships are husks that contain vast amounts of the swarm. They move to worlds that they call feeder worlds because they consume everything on the planet until it is nothing but a barren husk. And once there is nothing left to feed on, they move to a new planet and start this whole cycle over again. The Swarm does not claim any specific territory. They do not need it. They have no use for borders. They are not known for taking prisoners, but if they do, it's because they want something from your DNA to integrate into themselves, and you will only be alive until this extraction process is finished. When a Swarm component, that is the name of an individual within the Collective itself, when they find something that they like within an adversary, they can harvest that aspect from their DNA. They will then take this back to the swarm and the programmers who are living at the main colony, they will edit the new larva's genetic sequence so that it grows into something that never was before, but hopefully is better. This does have a side effect for the swarm in the sense that there are so many variations that it's just it, it doesn't describe it enough if you say, I ran into the swarm. Because it's very likely that the group of swarm you saw is not the same as the ones somebody else did. And if you saw them and lived to tell the tale, congratulations, good luck repairing your damaged psyche. The swarm, they also keep all of the genetic data that they have ever harvested. And the programmers, they will go through and splice new materials, try new things. They're always working to improve the swarm. Now, creatures of the swarm or components of the swarm, they have two views of anything that they run into. Food, threat. That's what any alien life form is to them. If I can't eat it, then it is a threat to be dealt with and I will kill it. And unfortunately, the only way to get the swarm not to raid your planet for everything that can be consumed on it is to have such a sizable force that it makes it inconvenient to go through the effort. The swarm, they do not know fear. The only reason that they will ever retreat from something is because it gives them a tactical advantage or some other tactical reason. Now, the components of the swarm, they don't feel emotion, anger, hate, animosity towards anyone that they've killed or any of their allies. There are some very rare instances of the swarm working together with another ally, but as soon as that partnership has reached its end and the swarm is no longer gaining any sort of benefit or advantage, they will turn on their previous partner. The swarm looks out for number one, which is the swarm. They aren't really bothered with a conscience or morality. I hear you asking this specific question. How does the swarm communicate? It is true that they have a verbal language, though none of them will ever use it. Instead, they try to communicate through posturing, body language, pheromones, and of course, telepathy. Because they are a hive mind collective, there is a common mental link through all members of the swarm. This allows them to act synchronously with very minimal effort. They can also reproduce in various ways. This is a part that also makes them nightmarish, horrible monsters. They can create more members of the swarm through cloning. They can do it the old fashioned way. And if the swarm comes to your planet and you manage to fend them off, if you leave even one alive, they are able to change their own gender and fertilize their own eggs. So one on your planet is still a problem. And how long does it take for these eggs to hatch? One year, couple of months, several weeks, 
You would be wrong on all of those. It is 60 hours. Once a larva has been genetically altered or reprogrammed, it liquefies inside of its cocoon and starts rebuilding itself with the new genetic sequence. So where did the swarm come from? That is also an excellent question, one that I have an answer for as soon as you hit that like button and that subscribe button with the bell notification so you never miss videos like this. Quick announcement, I also have a merch store now, so the link for that will be in the description below. The swarm began its existence as the Kucharns. Is that right? Can I get a read on that? No? Just make it up as I go? Okay. This was a race of insectoids that lived on a planet, the only inhabitable planet of a solar system with no name. If you found it, it was in the vast and it was never going to be good for you. The ancient Kucharns, they followed Hylax. Now Hylax was believed to be the first of the Kucharan species. The story goes she was a queen ascended to godhood to watch over her people. I use the term people loosely in this case. Now there was several Kucharan hives and they each had their own hive mind collective. And unfortunately these different hive minds, they fought against each other. Or maybe it was fortunately because you didn't have the swarm at that point. None of these hives were able to gain an advantage on each other. So while they did some give and take with their numbers when they went to war with each other, Ultimately, it was a stalemate. Now, just for some context about some areas of space that I've talked about, the vast, this is physically located furthest away from the packed worlds or the galactic core. There is not a lot of drift beacons here and most of the planets are unexplored. Now, this is in contrast to what the near space is. This is physically closer to the packed worlds in the galactic core, but there are more drift beacons. Their density is much higher in near space than it is in the vast. Now, for a planet or a place to be in near space or in the vast, distance is irrelevant. It's mostly based off of how many drift beacons there are. How easy is it to get to? Now back on the Kucharn homeworld, these hives that were warring with each other, no one was ever able to get the upper hand until one hive learned how to consume or integrate the consciousness or the collective hive mind of other tribes into their own. What is not known is how this information came about. It could have been from demonic influence, could have been from something else. Once this collective had managed to figure this out, they very quickly consumed all of the other tribes, all of the other Kucharns, and then they stripped their homeworld bare. This is sad because they lost their homeworld, but it also caused Hylax, their god, to turn her back on them out of sheer disappointment. With new all-consuming hunger as their main driving force, this hive, or this proto-swarm as it's referred to in some of the various manuals, they set about bioengineering their own ships, their own weapons, which was basically transforming themselves to be more of a efficient killing machine. They did have some difficulty spreading to the rest of the galaxy until Triune revealed the drift. Once Triune had done this, the swarm was able to adapt and build their own bio drift engines. And then they went out into the universe and proliferated. The only reason they have the name the swarm now is from those who ran into them and lived to tell the tale. Now, an interesting thing about the swarm is sometime during the gap, there was a mutation that happened in a colony of the swarm. This colony gained independent thought. They were released from the control of the hive mind. When you've only known collective thought or thinking for a collective group, this particular sub colony, they became addicted to individualism as if it was a drug. They then branded themselves as the Sheerans. They rejected the swarm's ideals and they went out among the stars to explore what their newfound individualism, what they could do with it. Now the Sheerans, they wanted their own planet. They wanted their own place to call home. After a little exploring, they found the Chuva system. This was a habitable system and no one lived there. The main planet that they decided to call their own home was Ilem Chuva. 
and they began settling it in 7 AG. It took quite some time to build up the planet to a point where they wanted to go out and start exploring more, seeing what they could find. But the Sheerans did make contact with the Pact Worlds in 83 AG. For a long time, things were quite peaceful. And again, I use that somewhat sarcastically if you're talking about the Vescarium and the Pact Worlds because they were at war for about 200 years. And it wasn't until the year 291 AG that the Swarm showed up and they attacked the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium simultaneously. In order to survive, the Pact Worlds and the Vescarium had to put aside their differences and fight a common enemy. And they did push them back. They were able to save both of their systems. This is the first time in After Gap history that the Swarm had actually been pushed back. Unfortunately for the Sheerans, due to this attack, the Swarm was able to learn of the Sheerans' homeworld. And in 319 AG, Ilum Chuva fell to a swarm attack. Now the swarm, they were slightly miffed that part of them had broken off and rejected their all-consuming ways, and they brought even more destruction than they were commonly known for to Ilum Chuva. The swarm are an ever-present threat to the universe. They are great bad guys to use for your stories. There is also over 18 variations that we have throughout the various monster manuals and adventure paths. They are strong. The Pact Worlds and the Vescarium were only barely able to hold them back, and while they were successful, it was just barely. It really could have gone the other way. Now, if you would like to learn about the Pact Worlds, please click on the playlist on your screen now, or if the Empire of Lizards is more your speed, then click on the Vescarium playlist. I would like to thank all of my patrons and those of you who have watched the video up until this point. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.